Hey, Blue Collar Ben here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be uh, converting this gas front load dryer to propane or LP using a conversion kit. I'll link in the description to the conversion kit that I'm using here, uh, but you want to make sure that you get the correct conversion kit for whatever dryer you happen to be converting. So we're going to go through the process. This one happens to be a Kenmore but it's actually made by LG, so when you search the part number for this particular unit, it comes out to be an actual LG part number, and so this also applies to a number of LG front load dryers. The reason that you have to convert from natural gas to propane is that the gases actually operate at slightly different pressures. Propane is a slightly higher pressure, whereas natural gas is lower. Therefore, the replacement orifice that we're going to be using has a slightly smaller hole that restricts the flow down to the proper amount for propane. So we've got a few steps to do for disassembly, and we start actually at the back of the dryer. There's just a couple of screws that we have to remove here. And I think sometimes there's one in the middle here, but there's not on this particular unit. So now we should be able to slide the top of this thing back towards us, so we're sliding it towards the back of the dryer, like that, and I think this should just lift off of here, we'll set that off to the side, and now we take out the two screws that hold this front control panel assembly on here, now there are these little uh, tabs here that we have to press and lift in order to get this thing off of here, so we'll start at one side here, you can see how you have to kind of lift like that. There it comes. And now this is free. And we'll just go ahead and set this on top of the unit, just like so. Making sure not to put any significant strain on these cables here. Now we're going to open up the door here. And we'll see right underneath this lint filter here, we have two screws. And these are actually stainless steel screws, so you're going to want to keep track of those and make sure they get put back in the same place. And there are a few more screws that hold the top edge of this panel assembly on here. So we're going to take those out. Now this door should tilt out for us. There's still a, a, a door switch here at the top. It senses whether or not the door is opened or closed. I'm actually just going to close this door here for now. And then we just have to disconnect this door switch here. Which I think we can just unplug this stuff here. Yep, just unplug that. And now we should be able to just lift this door off of here. And we're finally getting close now to where we can replace that orifice. So now right back in here, behind the gas valve, we should be able to see where the burner is. You can see that single burner there. And we have to remove this screw and this screw. And it's kind of tight back in here. This is the tool I used to remove those two screws that were kind of hard to get to. Just a little right angle ratchet tool that fits uh, bits with a quarter inch uh, nut driver basically size on here. And it's also set so that you can't push this through to the other side. I'll try to link to one of these in the description if you want. But it's a very handy right angle tool. So the screws are out and we'll go ahead and slide this forward like so. And then we should be able to lift it out of there. And right there is the old orifice, so we'll go ahead and get a wrench that fits this and turn that guy out of there. And unfortunately, this uh, these orifices here are metric, so if you have a 10 millimeter uh, gear wrench, that will work perfect, otherwise you'll have to suffer with a small crescent wrench like I'm going to. So there's the natural gas orifice right here, along with the new propane orifice. And you can see that there was a little bit of thread sealant used on this. So we will apply just a little bit of thread sealant on the new one as well. Being really careful not to get any thread sealant inside of the orifice. You can see how much narrower the propane orifice is versus the natural gas one. Natural gas is on the right, propane on the left. Pretty cool stuff. And here's the sealant that we're going to be using. Gonna just put a little bit around the threads here. I'll take our crescent wrench 
Give her just a little bit of snugness there. It doesn't have to be super tight. You know, you're tightening brass into aluminum, so go easy on it. There it goes. Now we can reinstall our two screws. All right, we're almost there. Only one more step, and that is to adjust the setting screw for the uh, regulator spring. And that is right there on top of the gas valve. And we're going to be using our little right angle tool again to be able to reach in there and get that thing cranked down. And if any of you care to read the fine print on the instructions for this, you can pause the video and do so at any point. Here's a side for converting the gas valve itself and going through those steps. And then on the other side here, we have our instructions for disassembling that front panel and uh, gaining access to the gas valve itself. So here is what we need to do. Currently, the setting screw is at that upper position, which is kind of grayed out. And then we will be screwing that down until it makes contact with the top of the gas valve there. Basically, this outer nut here, which is glued to this uh, screw, plastic screw assembly, needs to get turned all the way down until it is touching that brass surface right there. It's almost like they got too much glue on mine. And there we are. Now around back of the dryer here, you're going to want to make sure that you attach your LP sticker so that it is easy to see that the unit is indeed propane now, uh, at least until it gets converted back to natural gas. So make sure you go ahead and attach that sticker. I will put links in the description to the different uh, things that you may need for converting your dryer, uh, as well as some of the common LP kits that are available. Uh, but always make sure that you have the proper one for your uh, dryer application. So I'm going to reverse the process and put this thing back together, uh, but that covers the basics for what you need to know for converting a gas dryer. It's really not that bad. Just make sure that you do everything really detailed, don't skip any steps, and once you reconnect your gas lines, make sure that you check for leaks and do all the proper steps to stay, stay safe. I've done a couple other videos relating to gas lines, propane, and that kind of thing. So I'll put those in a short playlist right over here. So go ahead and click on that playlist. Today's sponsor is House Call Pro. If you run an appliance repair business or any other service industry business, you want to take a second and check them out. Head on over to housecallpro.com slash Ben, where you can check out a free demo of their app. And if you use my link, you'll get your first month for only $19.